Hi, this is Alonzo Bowden. I want to welcome you to episode 327 of my podcast, Who's Paying Attention? And as many of you know, in a way, this is the big one. This is uh, my temporary goodbye until we figure things out. Um, Juneteenth is tomorrow, and it is also the debut of radio station KBLA 1580 here in Los Angeles. And starting Monday the 21st, I will be doing this show, Who's Paying Attention, Monday to Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific Time on KBLA. If you want to listen, and I hope you do, you can listen through KBLA1580.com. And there will be an app. There will be an app released, and you can um, you can listen through the app. So that's going to be happening. And as many of you know, I'm going to put the podcast on hold. I'm not going to end the podcast. I'm going to put the podcast on hold. We have talked about possibly connecting it to the radio show and broadcasting through the podcast or doing like a highlight thing through the podcast, or I'm just going to put it on hold until we, till I figure things out and can do it again. But wow, I, I really want to thank you guys for all the support. Over the years, man, I've been doing this a long time. This is my, I'm in my third administration of this podcast. I started this after my first um, Showtime special, which was called Who's Paying Attention, back in the Obama administration. Then uh, survived Trump, and now it's Biden. And a lot of you have been with me the whole time. So I really, really appreciate that. And I was wondering, what should I talk about on this podcast? As many of you know, I just pull random stuff from the news and, and talk about it. But I didn't like, I was like, I got to make this better. And that's what I'm thinking it should be. This, this podcast, I'm going to call this one. Let's do better because we could do better. We can do better. Now, let's, uh, 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 one of the big developments obviously is Juneteenth. And, and for those who don't know, Juneteenth is basically, basically it's not basically, it is the celebration to the end of slavery. Um, Texas was the last to get the word. Imagine that. <laughs> and June 19th is when the slaves were freed in Texas. And it has since been a holiday, like so many other things, like the Tulsa massacre. And we were, a friend of mine and I were talking about this yesterday. I don't know about you. I didn't know anything about the Tulsa massacre until after I got out of high school. Until after, because they never mentioned it in school. And Juneteenth is another thing that wasn't taught in schools. And now it's it's very ironic, very interesting, very funny. And uh, yeah, by funny, I mean fucking sad that we now will celebrate the end of slavery. And right away, right wingers, white people on the right were offended by it. Like, like how are you offended by celebrating the end of slavery? And they're like, well, there's only one Independence Day and it's July 4th. Well, you know, it's something July 4th, 1776, well, is considered the day of independence for America. Maybe black people weren't doing so well on that day. And again, celebrating Juneteenth does not take away from celebration of July 4th. That's what they don't get. It's, it's not all an either or except in their minds. So how about we do better? And, and the other... The, the, the irony, and listen, the Juneteenth holiday, I get it, what people are saying. Listen, it doesn't change the loss of voter rights. It doesn't do anything about systematic racism or the police. But one thing it does, and, and I don't even know how they're going to handle it. So there are at least six states that don't want to teach anything about critical race theory or the 1619 Project. They, they want to whitewash slavery and it wasn't so bad and this and that well now with juneteenth being a federal holiday i wonder how they're going to explain in schools like well there's a holiday coming for something that really didn't exist or wasn't so bad you know at one point texas and texas is going to keep coming up because this is like a texas type thing Te so for those who don't know texas buys more school books than any state so the publishers of school textbooks tend to follow recommendations and try to appease the Texas school boards, the various Texas school boards. And one of the things they tried to slip in was calling slaves migrant workers. 
yeah, they kind of got caught on that one. But that's that's when we say whitewash slavery, that's what we mean. Trying to make it like it wasn't the most horrible thing, worse than anything you could imagine. Bondage and forced labor and beatings and murder and rape. And there was no crime you could commit against a black person that was considered a crime because a black person wasn't considered a person. They were considered property. They were, and, and the cruelty went beyond anything you would do to animals. And, and it went on after that with lynching and the Jim Crow era. And it's, we know the history, but they don't want to teach the history. And, and yet now with the holiday, how do they not mention the history? I, I don't know. I don't know, but that's um, that's what's going on. Man, that's a long way from launching a radio station. See what I mean by let's do better? See how heavy I get? See how sad it gets when I try to talk about something positive? Let's get Texas out of the way, okay? Texas just, the governor of Texas just signed a bill to allow holstered handguns to be carried in Texas without a permit. Old West, anybody can walk around with a gun without a permit. Now, the police are still allowed to challenge you if you're carrying a gun. Now, who do you suppose they're going to challenge if they take advantage of this new ridiculous open carry law? I'm going to just, I'm going to reach here and say that if you are black or brown, you should probably not openly carry a gun in a holster in Texas it will probably not end well okay i'm just gonna just gonna put that out there that i it, it might be the law but there's gonna be some accidents okay let's just let's not pretend and and on this topic i posted a picture on my instagram of um a woman in the poconos the poconos which is nothing but a little vacation town i'm not sure if it's in pennsylvania i think it's in pennsylvania officially but New York, Philly, Jersey, they go up there. There's snow in the winter and in the summer. It's picnics in the woods and they got casino. It's a little tiny vacation town. And some people live there year round. They, they did a developing thing on it. And I think you can get to Manhattan in two hours. So some people are like, I'm just going to live there. And this woman's in a grocery store with a gun. It looks like the gun is tucked in her waistband and she's reaching for something in a cart. And the gun is obvious. You can see the gun. And, uh, you know, and people were like, you know, so I posted a picture of it because it's ridiculous. We're, we're carrying open guns in, in supermarkets. By any reasonable standard, that is absolutely ridiculous and, and only leads to a problem. And there were some responsible gun owners, people who know these things, who posted like, that's not how you carry a gun. If you have a carry permit, you don't carry it open, you conceal it. And some said, I carry a gun and no one knows I have a gun except me. And if you're wearing a gun like that, you're sending a message, which seemed reasonable to me. Then you get the people, you know, Alonzo, you're shaming. I'm shaming a woman for carrying a gun openly in a supermarket. You don't know who she has a restraint against, order against. You don't know the domestic abuse she's afraid of or, you know, this or that. It, look, I'll stand by what I said. If you need to openly carry a gun in a supermarket you need to get your groceries delivered if you're that scared to go out in this society i mean this is madness and again i'm not anti-gun but i'm anti-ridiculous how many stories they like oh wasn't there a shooting in a supermarket yes there was a shooting in a supermarket and there's shootings in schools and there was shooting at a uh i believe it was fedex and in, in san jose i know no i'm sorry the fedex shooting was in indianapolis the the light rail shooting was in San Jose. So yeah, there's shoot there's mass shootings because it's what we do and the world is open again. See, let's do better. I'm so happy right now. It is ridiculous to be carrying that gun the way she carried it in in a grocery store. It is irresponsible and I guess she should leave the Poconos and move to Texas. Move to Texas, lady. And speaking of Texas, how's this? <laughs> <laughs> this, and again, this is just Texas. You, Why are you competing with Florida to be our craziest state? Um, the Texas power companies, if you have a controllable thermostat, like a Nest thermostat that you can control through Wi-Fi, etc., 
they can actually change the thermostat settings in your house because if you remember the Texas power grid went out in the winter and they said that it was you know too cold and everybody had their heat on and everything now the Texas power grid may go out in the summer because it's too hot apparently the power companies of Texas didn't know that there's weather in Texas and uh, extremes of weather but they can actually control your thermostat you think you control your thermostat? No, they control the, your thermostat. More Big Brother type stuff. Uh, wow. Go Texas. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's all this going on. And again, when I say let's do better, as a society, let's do better. Uh, let's stop Mitch McConnell. You know, I talked about this before, about McConnell and Pelosi, and I don't know if they're in in cahoots we're in the old west let's go in cahoots they might be in cahoots working together to keep each other in a job because of the insanity and how horrifically they do their job so now mcconnell is saying that if the republicans get the senate back that they're going to continue to hold up supreme court nominations until they can put in the judge they want We've, we've talked about the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court needs to be expanded to at least 25 justices. At least 25 justices. Why? Because then you still have justices from both sides, but if one of them dies, it doesn't sway the entire court. So I wish the Democrats would work on that. Democrats got work to do. They'd try and, and, and you know, Biden standing up to Putin and, and they showed pictures of the the body language Putin sat with respect to Biden as opposed to petting a lap dog when he was talking to Trump so we we are getting some credibility there but but the Democrats need to do away with the filibuster just stop the filibuster and they need to do something with the Supreme Court not just to not to get the power back but to balance it for the future to get it back to what it was supposed to be it was supposed to be an independent body that would com would make sure legislation complied or or was in line with the constitution and the will of the people because contrary to Rand Paul's belief by the way Rand Paul said that America's democracy is not dependent on a majority that America's democracy should be to protect the minority and he went so far as to say well the majority came up with Jim Crow laws and those were wrong i know it's it's unbelievable it's mind-boggling it's bullshit and you know what democracy means it means that everybody votes and the majority wins that's what democracy means okay and everybody votes not just who the republicans think should vote so yeah there's there's all of this um <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm cool with Joe Rogan, okay? And yeah, and I've been on the show a few times. I've known Joe for over 20 years. Um, I love Joe, you know, and, and Joe says things that I don't necessarily agree with, and but I don't say Joe's a racist. Joe allows a lot of conspiracy theorists and right-wingers on his podcast. That's his right. That's okay. But every now and then, Joe says something that, you know, and it's very simple and he's right. And in Joe talking about the um, insurrection on the 6th and, you know, he talks about there should be a commission to investigate. And he says, I think it's really important. And one of the reasons why I think it's important because it highlights the reasons why a guy like Donald Trump is so fucking dangerous because a guy can incite a bunch of morons to do something really fucking stupid. So that that's, yeah, that's a pretty good description of Donald Trump. Dangerous because he can incite a bunch of morons to do something stupid. And we see they double down on the stupidity and now they profit off the stupidity. The guy who is sitting in Nancy Pelosi's office with his feet up on the desk sells pictures of it and is... So, good on you, Joe. You nailed that one. More Texas. I just go through the news, 
and Texas keeps coming up. Florida's having a good week. Florida's like, have you seen Texas this week? <laughs> no, really. Have you seen Texas this week? Headline. Just the headlines enough. Texas man who declined COVID-19 vaccine speaks out after undergoing a double lung transplant. Really? So I guess COVID is real. This guy offered the vaccine in January because he was at risk. Nah, I don't need the vaccine. It ain't real. It's just a cold. Double lung transplant. If it's up to me, I'm sorry. God bless him, his family, whatever. He doesn't get the lung transplant. He doesn't get it. Why? Because you made the choice. You made a choice and you chose to not be vaccinated against a deadly pandemic, a, a virus that attacks your breathing. You have some compromised lung situation and you actually turn it down. Jeez. So, yeah, I could I could keep going. But why? Hey, here's a, here's some good news. Stocks post record run under Biden. Yeah, under under Joe Biden, the S and P five hundred has climbed twenty six percent, making it the best two hundred twenty day stretch for stocks after a presidential election since World War Two. That's pretty good, Joe. You ain't perfect, but you're doing good. So I'm gonna do a little more, but first. By the way, when I'm thanking people, let me thank my sponsors. People who sponsor the podcast, I appreciate you, and I want you to patronize these people, okay? Let's talk about Credit Karma. Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions, but now they're going to help you even more. With a Credit Karma money spend account, you can be rewarded for good money habits, okay? Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account and you can win cash reimbursements after you make purchases. It's simple. When you use your Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. Man, I hope you bought something for $4,000 and not something for $3.83 when you win, okay? Here's how you do it. You pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot, and your instant karma cash will go right back into your spend account. So, when you make a purchase between June 8th and June 30th, you'll be automatically entered to win $1 million. Yeah, that's above and beyond the instant karma. You could win $1 million. Open your FDIC-insured spend account for free, no minimum balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. So this is what you do. Visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money, sign up for free, start winning instant karma. Okay, one more time. Creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant Karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Incorporated. Member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits apply. Because you got to read the legal stuff. Now, another sponsor who I love what they do at the podcast and I love what they do. And I want to say thank you to BetterHelp.com. Now, we, we've talked about this over and over, Okay. We're talking about mental health. Betterhelp.com. What interferes with your happiness? What stops you from achieving your goals? The, these are the things that happen. I told you, I go through this. I go through battles of self-doubt, uh, low self-esteem. Betterhelp.com can help you. Okay, we're talking about mental health, better mental health, just taking care of yourself. Betterhelp will assess your needs, match you with a licensed professional therapist, you connect in a safe and private online environment, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Okay, this isn't a crisis line. It's not self-help. This is a professional counselor. You get timely and thoughtful responses. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, and you don't have to go to the waiting room or anything else. You can do it online, on the phone. Okay, it's more affordable than traditional counseling and financial aid is available. So many things we're dealing with these days. Depression, stress, anxiety, family conflicts, grief, like, like I said, self-esteem, anger, anything. 
Anything you share is confidential, okay? It's convenient, professional, and affordable. This is what you do. As a listener, you get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash Alonzo, okay? Join over 1 million people. I tell you, you're not the only one. I'm not the only one. This is this is about your health, okay? If, if you had a bad knee, you'd go to the doctor. Sometimes our emotions, sometimes our mental health, we need to go to, we need to talk to somebody. So join over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Alonzo. 10% off your first month. Please do it for you. So, um, there's still, there's still so much going on, but I said, we're going to try to do better. And, and I really hope that we do. Uh, <laughs> here's a random story that I just, I just enjoyed. Okay. <laughs> here's a wealth secret of the super rich. Are you ready? How the super rich get rich and stay rich. Be born into a rich family. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay. Enough of this. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, buy some Bitcoin nonsense. No, what you do is you get born into the richest family, okay? 10 of the richest families in the United States, including like the Walmart family and the Mars family that does, does candy bars and stuff like this. Um, they sort of assets balloon. Get this, get this. An increase in their combined wealth. This is 10 families. An increase in their combined wealth of over $136 billion in 14 months. And again, I say, we say billion like it's nothing. A billion dollars is a thousand million dollars. They have, their, their money has gone up $136,000 million in the past 14 months. You're working? What the hell is wrong with you? You should have just been born a Walton. Okay? You should have been born a Walton because Sam Walton in 1983... He founded Walmart. The family was worth $2.15 billion, 1983. Now, $247 billion. Yeah, Walmart's put everyone out of business. If you live in a small town, there's no small town stores anymore. There's a Walmart. The Mars Dynasty started in 1911. That's when they first made the Mars bars, Milky Ways, and whatever other candy we eat. In 2020, family's worth $94 billion. You're working. You're working. Why weren't you born into the right family? If you were born into the right family, you wouldn't be listening to me right now. Your family would be worth $94 billion and you'd be able to kick back. All right? <laughs> so, the secret to being rich, boys and girls, be born rich. And when they talk to you about how smart they are and what they did and blah, 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 just, just remember... They were born rich. Few earned it. Few earned it. But the best way to do it, just be born rich. Um, okay, that's enough. I want to spend, I want to send a special thank you to some people who've been really supportive and helpful over the years that I've done this podcast. So my cousin Alex, I love you because you always check and keep me honest. Angela in Ohio always supporting me in the podcast. Thank you. Florence down in the Carolinas. Florence claims her spot as my number one fan. And Florence, I ain't going to argue with you because you are fantastic to me and I appreciate the support. Ramon Islas. I will use his last name because Ramon is one badass percussionist who plays with the band Chicago. You've heard of them. He's an old friend he supports the podcast. He also is a big supporter of the Dodgers. And even as a Laker fan, he supports me on the Clippers. So I got to love my man, Ramon. And Mark up in the Pacific Northwest who sends me articles all the time. And sometimes he and I are laughing. Sometimes we're crying. But usually we're just shaking our heads looking at the ongoing stupidity of, of what's happening out here. So thank you. And thank everyone else, of course. But I just wanted to personally thank these people with a shout out. And once again, starting Monday, who's paying attention will move to KBLA1580.com. I'm going to be on AM radio. 
here in LA. And when the app comes out, you will be able to call and talk to me. It's talk radio. I would love that if you guys actually join me and interact with me once this goes to radio, once the app is up. So, you know, I'll be posting about it. You know, I'm, I'm on Instagram at Zoe Funny, everywhere else at Alonzo Bowden. And, and I sincerely, and I mean this, and I know you hear it all the time, but I really do. Thank you guys, man. Thanks for the support. I, I love what I do and I love the support you get. Listen, I joke about my, my notoriety, my level of fame, not being super famous and not being a, you know, household name and all of that. And how I wish I could get canceled and maybe get one good scandal to move me up the chart on the, on my Q rating. But uh, all of that aside, I so appreciate you people who listen and email me and chat and do whatever to support what I do. You've told your friends about me. You've come to see me live. Every live show, there's some people that are like, hey, I'm paying attention. Thank you so much for that. I love my job. I love what I do, and I'm going to keep doing it. Right now, I'm here in the office. The Hulk is quite comfortable sleeping behind me because that's what he does. He's a, he's a welcome addition to my operation. <laughs> For those who don't know, he's my Great Dane puppy growing quite rapidly. Go to Zoe Funny on Instagram. You'll see pictures of the Hulk. Um, he's up to six months and he just broke 100 pounds. He's a big dog and I love him. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. I'm taking a break. I'm not going away. Who's paying attention? You are. And, and tomorrow night on Juneteenth, I am going to be on MSNBC. Huh? How cool is that? I, I really look forward to that. I'm going to be on a show and it's called The Week with Joshua Jackson. It is um, 6 o'clock Pacific time, so 9 o'clock Eastern time. MSNBC and it's going to be going to be great and it looks like my other favorite Alonzo is going to be on there Christella Christella Alonzo is going to be on there I, I love Christella she's great you guys are great thank you so much who's paying attention you are and I will appreciate it Texas do better get your act together thank you be nice to somebody be nice to yourself take care <laughs>